All right, Firemine here, and today we have a little bit different tutorial. So I'm not actually going to show you something that is uh, Unity specific. I'm going to focus on some coding tips right now. So with this tip, you might be able to improve your coding by like a million times. Well, maybe not a million, but maybe like 10 times. It does not matter which language you are coding in. Maybe you like to use JavaScript, maybe you like to use C Sharp, maybe you like to use C++, or maybe you are one of these hipsters and like to use Go. It does not matter. This tip is completely independent from what language you use it on, but it still helps you a very great deal and it is super easy to implement. So stay tuned for that. All right, so let's have a look at some code here to give you an example. So let's bring your attention to this function. So for this exercise, can you tell me what this function does? Well, time is up. If you're an experienced coder, you might have been able to figure out what it does. But if you are, what the hell are you doing on this video? Go watch some reaction videos too. I don't know. Let's also have a look at a different piece of code, which is actually better. And you are going to be surprised that it is better at first because it's actually more code. And in the beginner's mind, often the is uh, less code is better. That is sometimes the case. That's true. But less code is not better for the sacrifice of readability. And I'm going to show you what I mean in a second. So let's check out this piece of code. So as you can see, we have two functions now. But if you read from top to bottom, how long does it take you to figure out what that function does? Exactly. If you read it right, you should be able to tell what this function does just by reading the first line. Because this right here tells you exactly what this function does. Extract duplicates from an array. Now, in this function, it was some like abbreviation of what it actually meant. And you do not want to do that. I see beginners do that all the time. They think uh, they have to shorten their code as much as possible so they it looks more neat. But that is definitely not the case. You should not sacrifice readability for less code. So let's look at the other at the other stuff, all the variables. Like, it, it makes absolutely no sense to call an array with duplicates dupes just to, like, shorten it. You gain absolutely nothing from that. What you want to do is you want to write it out. So every time you use that variable, you don't have to look up what this actually is. So, for example, if I read through this function and I declare dupes here, and, I mean, in this case, it's a pretty short function, so you might still be able to remember. But if you have larger functions and you, and you go down the code and then suddenly dupes appears and says, dubs add and you're like oh, what is dubs again like what, what what does it do i don't know and in this case you know dubs oh that's duplicate so that's the area with all the duplicates that's way easier to read essentially you want to be able to read your code from top to bottom as if it was plain text um so the next big change here is that second for loop that we have nested in here which is here outsourced into a function that's something else that you may want to consider all the time. I get that in this case it might be a little bit overkill, but usually you want to break down everything in as little functions as you can because you can beautifully name functions. And in this one, in this for loop, I would actually have to read this for loop to see what it does. In this case, the only thing I need to read is the function name. Compare, compare element to all elements in the array. Done. So I know what this does. I don't need to go into the for loop and figure out what it does. I know in this case it's probably pretty easy, but when if you have a more complex loop, uh, it is always a good idea to wrap that into a function which somebody can read. Because in the end, what happens is once you are out of that starting phase of programming something, you're going to enter the phase where you are fixing bugs, where you are adding small features here and there, and you're going to end up more spending more time reading code than actually writing code. So code that is actually very well readable becomes more and more attractive. And that's 
basically the whole tip that I'm trying to give you here. Keep your code as readable as possible, basically. So you always want to give your variables proper names. Don't use like 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 right here. Don't use just some letters just to keep it short. Call it by what it actually does, what it is. And yeah, don't also like if you have something like throw an error, don't call it ERR. That makes no sense. You gain nothing. You just lose readability. Call it error. Name it what it is. That's the main tip for this whole thing. Break everything down to small functions. Give those function names. Give your variables good names. And that way you will increase your readability, the readability of your code by like a tenfold. And all your colleagues are going to thank you for it. And everybody's happy. Now, this is completely unrelated to C Sharp. It is just for programming in general, no matter if you write PHP, JavaScript, whatever. Keep your variables and functions or give your variables and functions readable names. That is the whole tip of today. So I hope that helped you guys and you like you could uh, you give that a little bit of a thought and write some better code in the future if you haven't before. If you have, good on you. Also, if you like this video, please leave me a like. If you have any questions to that, just leave me a comment down below. And if you would like to see more videos, please subscribe. Also, if you have any other tutorial requests, can't find the tutorial you are looking for? Well, just ask for it then. Just go to tutorial-request.com and check out if other people are searching for the same tutorial as you do. If you find a matching request, make sure to leave it a like, so other creators always know what's in demand. And if you can't find a request that you are looking for, just create a new one. Simply click on New Request, then choose a title, topic and description for your request and simply click on Make Request and you're done. It's that easy. And with your request, you help creators know what's in demand. So go over to tutorial-request.com and sign up today. It's free.